Y'all get ready. Yes, you get ready. This news in the streets. Join us and tune in for the tea. Breaking news with integrity. So sell your friends and your family. It's the lovely TV show. Bringing you good tea and good vibes. It's the lovely TV show. Be sure to share, like, and subscribe. Hey, tea sippers. Happy Wednesday. I hope everybody's doing good today. When I tell you this Lizzo tea is piping hot, honey. So, Everything kind of went down yesterday, and a lot of folks were asking me to make a video, but I wanted to wait until more information came out. And when I tell you today, she has been trending all day. Currently, Damn Lizzo is trending. When I tell you the memes are memeing, okay, they are dragging Lizzo right now for the filth. Now, let me go ahead and break down what all is going on. So yesterday... Um, it was announced that she was being sued by three of her backup dancers. So if you guys do not know, Lizzo has an Amazon reality show called Watch the Big Girls, where basically they're trying to make the cut. You know, they're trying to be her background dancers. Let me go ahead and show y'all the trailer. Check this out. Each week we're getting closer and closer to Bonnaroo. So these girls have to show us that you can perform and that you want to get on that stage, honey. This is not a handout. This is boot camp. Let's go! Give it up for the baddest bitch on the planet. Lizzo! Work, ladies. Step your pussy up. This is about dancing. But not any photo shoot. Uh-oh. What kind? Uh -oh. A nude photo shoot. <laughs> All right, so you guys just saw that clip. So what's basically going on is that three of her former backup dancers, Ariana Davis, Crystal Williams, and Noel Rodriguez, they are filing a lawsuit and they're basically alleging that they were sexually harassed and subjected to a toxic work environment while on tour. They were also saying that they were exposed to an overtly sexual atmosphere and that Lizzo, honey, yes, Lizzo beaten, was making fun of them, was fat shaming them and things like that. Fat shaming, child, ain't that the pot calling the kettle black? But anyways... Also included in the lawsuit with Lizzo, whose real name is Melissa Jefferson, is also a woman named Shirlene Quigley. And she's some type of manager. or She works in management with Lizzo. And they're saying that Miss Quigley is super religious and was always trying to prophesize to them and talk about, you know, religious stuff and how, you know, they need to keep their virginity and God and all this stuff. But in the same breath, they're also saying that Miss Quigley was a low-key freak. That one minute she's talking about God, the next minute she's talking about masturbation and giving head and all types of crazy shit. And so it made the, the dancers very uncomfortable to the amount of sexual harassment, fat shaming, and other allegations that they were subjected to. They were also saying that Miss Quigley, um, who is a preacher slash Christian dancer was also fixated on one of the ladies virginity and kept telling her that she needs to keep her virginity. She shouldn't be having sex, but then in the same breath wanted to talk about her own sex capades. So again, this is a case of somebody trying to serve two masters at the same damn time. Now on top of that, they're also talking about an occasion that went on in a nightclub in Amsterdam the lawsuit says that Lizzo began inviting her employees to touch nude performers, handle dildos, and use bananas in their performances. And out of fear of retaliation, the dancers, you know, they basically broke down and they did everything that Lizzo was asking to do, which includes touching the breast of nude female performers and, you know, also being forced to eat a banana out of somebody's yoo-hoo, okay? So Lizzo's a big old nasty freak, honey. Now, there's a girl on TikTok who's also breaking down a bit more about the lawsuit, and her name is Talk of Shame. So I'm going to go ahead and play her video right here. Check this out. So I just read through all 37 pages of the lawsuit against Lizzo, her production company, and the captain of her dance squad. And wow, there is a lot in here. I want to try to just give you the highlights and also not get banned because some of this stuff is pretty wild. There are nine different complaints in this lawsuit. Some of the complaints are all of the plaintiffs against all of the defendants, all of the defendants being Lizzo, her production company, and her dance captain, Shirley Quigley. And some of the complaints are just one or two of the plaintiffs against maybe one or two of the defendants. 
The first complaint is hostile work environment. The second complaint is failure to prevent and or remedy hostile work environment. Third is religious harassment. Fourth is failure to prevent and or remedy religious harassment. Fifth is racial harassment. Sixth is disability discrimination. Seventh is intentional interference with prospective economic. Eight is assault. And nine is false imprisonment. So two of the dancers we met on Lizzo's show, Watch Out for the Big Girls, and the third dancer was hired a little bit later. And we also met the dance captain, Sherling Quigley, who is named as a defendant in this suit. A lot of major claims in this lawsuit center around the dance captain, Sherling Quigley. And it seems, according to this lawsuit, like she was just this uber religious woman. And she was constantly trying to like talk about the Lord and trying to convert people and people were uncomfortable with it. And she was preaching about how premarital sex was bad. And then when she found out one of the dancers in this lawsuit, Ariana Davis, was a virgin, she became like obsessed with this and would just like bring it up and talk about it all the time, which obviously made her really uncomfortable but then it's like really strange because then even though she's like uber religious and preaching all these things she would also like talk about weird sexual things in front of them and they said that she had this like what was called a party trick where she would use a banana to simulate you know what I'm saying with her mouth and it was like a thing she did they say in this lawsuit that it didn't stop there with Quigley and that like in addition to like doing this like faux simulation with the banana she would talk about how like um pleasing yourself you know is against her religion but then she'd be like but oops today i had an oopsie which is just like strange and they said like that you know they, she would talk about these sort of like sexually explicit comments so much that the entire dance team knew that her fantasy was having let me see how i could put this 10 eggplants in her face they all knew this, apparently. Another of the allegations in the suit is that after performances, Lizzo would invite the dancers out for a night on the town. And then one night in Amsterdam, she had this whole event like in the red light district at this like club where there was like nude cabaret performers. And Ariana Davis says that like, you know, she really didn't want to participate, but like she was being egged on and basically forced to, you know, touch the breast of one of the performer, even though she didn't want to. So what the dancers allege in the suit is that like, even though they didn't want to go to these places and they felt uncomfortable, they felt they had to for job security because they said it was just sort of this like unspoken, you know, thing that dancers who participated in these extracurriculars got preferential treatment by Lizzo and had more job security. Now, where the racial discrimination comes in, the dancers say that the production, the management team was mostly white people and that the production team treated the black members of the dance team differently than other members and that allegedly they accused the black members of the dance team of being lazy, unprofessional and having bad attitudes. So then according to this lawsuit, they get back from the European part of this tour and Lizzo is just like unhappy with all the dancers and says like, everyone has to re-audition and your jobs aren't safe. And if, if I don't like the way you audition, you're gonna be fired. And that this audition allegedly turned into this 12 hour day where the dancers just felt like scared to even leave the stage or they were gonna get fired. So the one dancer Davis said like, she, you know, she really had to use the bathroom, but was too scared. So ended up, you know, urinating on herself. So then where the assault and false imprisonment comes in. So two of the dancers, Davis and Williams, were fired. And it was like kind of embarrassing how they did it. They kind of did it publicly. And the other dancer, Rodriguez, like didn't really like how that all went down. So she approached Lizzo and was like, I need to have a talk to you about how you handle the situation. And according to Rodriguez in this complaint, she said that Lizzo got really aggressive, approached her, cracking her knuckles, bawling her fists, and exclaiming, you're lucky, you're so effing lucky. And she says that she believes that Lizzo intended to hit her and would have done so if one of the other dancers hadn't intervened. And then the false imprisonment comes because Davis said that like, you know, she had been accused of record, or she had, a, she had recorded a conversation that had happened, but she said that, you know, she has this like anxiety disability where she like can't really process it in the moment. She needs to record things and listen to it later. And the management team and Lizzo were like, you recorded this conversation, got mad. So when they fired her, they like 
allegedly kept her in this room, like went through her phone until they could like see that she had deleted the file. There's still so much more to unpack with this lawsuit. And now I'm also seeing that other dancers are posting in their stories, sort of corroborating what the dancers in this lawsuit are saying and saying they had similar experiences. So I'm gonna keep sharing more as I get more information. All right, so you guys just saw that clip. So like I said, this entire situation is very, very interesting. Another thing that's crazy is that this banana sex show is definitely a real thing because people have now found an interview that Lizzo did back in 2019 in Amsterdam on a radio station where they talked about the famed banana sex show. And Lizzo was saying that she wanted to get her potassium by eating a banana out of somebody's Woohoo. Y'all go ahead and check this out. Show where it was like a couple and they were like passionately making love. It was really passionate. It, it, it was really pa they kissed. Did she they kissed after I'm not gonna say what she did. <laughs> but I'm trying to go to the show where you eat the banana out the pussy. Which one is that? This is a banana bar. Well, that's the banana bar? Yeah, you And they the have the banana, banana in the in yeah, the yeah, coochie. And, and ping pong bowls. And you have to go. Yes. And That's what to, I want to do. Then you have to eat it. I need my potassium, if you know what I'm saying. <laughs> my poos, potassium. <laughs> oh, this nasty bitch. All right, so you guys just saw that clip. Now, if that's not crazy enough, um, there's a filmmaker named Sophia Allison. And basically, she has corroborated with everything that these girls are saying. She took to social media to write the following. She says, I usually don't comment on anything pop culture related, but in 2019, I traveled a bit with Lizzo to be the director of her documentary. I walked away after about two weeks. I was treated with such disrespect by her. I witnessed how arrogant, self-centered, and unkind she is. I was not protected, and I was thrown into a shitty situation with little support. My spirit said to run as fast as you fucking can, and I'm also grateful I trusted my gut. I felt gaslit and deeply hurt, but I've healed. Reading these reports made me realize how dangerous of a situation it was. This is the kind of abuse of power that happens too often. Much love and support to the dancers. Then she also goes on to say, For clarification, I'm not a part of the lawsuit, but this was very much my experience in my time being there. Big shout out to the dancers who had the courage to bring this to light. So then another woman named Quinn Wilson also kind of retweeted what Sequest said. And she says, echoing what at Sequest said, I haven't been a part of that world for around three years for a reason. I very much applaud the dancers' courage to bring this to light. And I grieve parts of my own experience. I'd appreciate space to understand my feelings. So this situation is getting very, very real with Lizzo. Um, now today, breaking news, Two of the dancers did an interview with CBS. So I'm going to go ahead and play you guys what they had to say about the situation. So y'all go ahead and check this out. Former dancers have filed a lawsuit accusing the singer of sexual harassment and racial discrimination, along with creating a hostile work environment. CBS News has reached out to Lizzo's team, but we've yet to receive a response. Uh, ladies, thanks for joining us. Um, you know, reading some of the things in the lawsuit, I, I mean, it, 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 it is really disturbing and I think rather shocking. You know, you guys say that the dancers were not treated the same as other staff and crew. Um, Ariana, can you sort of give me a sense of how things were different for the dancers? I just um, think that the standard for dancers um, in this camp was very much more stringent and more strict. Um, things that, you know, the other cast members could do um, and, you know, get away with essentially um, the dancers were not allowed to engage in any of that activity um, in terms of, in terms of like the, the um, false allegations that they had, brought forth to us when we were on tour about us drinking before shows and things like that. Um, that was never the case. In fact, alcohol was never even allowed in our dressing room or on our rider, which is the food and drinks provided to us. Um, so it, it was like literally impossible for us to even do that. But yet we were the ones who were blamed for drinking on the job. Um, and um, 
it was stated to us by, you know, Lizzo that she was like, it doesn't matter if I'm doing it. It doesn't matter if the band or anyone or anyone else is doing it. It's like, you guys can't do it. Um, so and, you're yeah. what, what I hear, because so, because you guys were let go, you're saying that, you know, the reasons why you were let go, you believe were false. Why do you think you were let go? Uh, for me personally, um, we did have a meeting, uh, the one that Ari was speaking of with her, uh, mentioning the allegations of us drinking before shows. And, um, in that particular meeting, I did, uh, ask to speak in which I, uh, informed her and let her know that us drinking before, before shows was never the case. Um, and that we would never want to put her, the show or ourselves or our jobs in jeopardy, um, to which she kind of just blew it off and, um, said, okay, well, if you're not drinking before us, well, then good for you. Mm -hmm. um, you guys still aren't performing the way that y'all need to. And pe people are probably saying that because of how you're you're performing. So, um, and then days later, I was um, let go in a hotel lobby. So, okay. Ladies, the lawsuit names Lizzo, her touring company, and her former creative director, Shirlene Quigley. Outside of the claims against Lizzo specifically, do you think she was aware of the sexual harassment you say you experienced from Quigley? Um, I think in a way, I think uh, Lizzo definitely knew that Shirlene um, was a very outwardly religious person, which is not a problem. It's just um, when you try to force that onto other people and then in turn make some kind of like strange sexual, um, it's just a sexually charged, it, uh, situation. Um, and I, I'm not sure if she was fully aware of that because I, again, I don't really think she tried her best to keep tabs on everything that we were going through and, you know, dealing with. Um, but I do know that she knew that, um, that Charlene was very, very adamant about sharing her faith in the workplace. So I just want to sort of point out some of the specifics in your lawsuit in regards to what you're talking about. You said uh, um, you're alleging that uh, Quigley uh, was pushing her religious beliefs on the dancers and then was sort of critical of dancers who, you know, didn't kind of believe what she believed. But I think... Uh, kind of some of the more disturbing allegations has to do with sort of a night of partying in uh, Amsterdam, where the allegation is that some of the dancers were pressured into you know, touching a nude performer. Amsterdam has a red light district that, that is legal, um, but the, that, you know, the dancers were made to feel very uncomfortable and participate in ways that they were not, that they did not want to do. Um, so, I, so I'm going to sort of reiterate um, Ed's question, these are, are allegations that, does, the, really the direct question is, does, did Lizzo know about this behavior that you're alleging? Well, Lizzo was um, a participant in the, Lizzo is the reason that we were, that I specifically was pressured to um, touch a new performer. She singled me out at the club that I didn't want to be at, but was told I couldn't really back out since I already said I was going before I knew what it really was. Um, once I had time to research it, me and Noel Rodriguez also, um, we figured out what it was and we we're like, okay, well, maybe we should not go, you know, this is a little weird. Um, but then we were told that a head count was already sent, a list was already sent. So she knows who's coming. And at that time, we had already been kind of fearing for our jobs and being ostracized. So it is a understand it's an understanding in the camp that if you don't really participate and you know try to get in with Lizzo, it's it you you won't be booked on as many jobs. She won't like you as much. It it just you'll be ostracized later. So we went, we stayed in the corner, we talked to each other the whole time. We tried to ignore, you know, what was happening. Um, a lot of crazy things were happening. Um, and after a lot of explicit things went on, um, Lizzo kind of saw me, singled me out. She was kind of going around, like, um, inviting people to touch the nude performers. And, um, I guess it was my turn and she, um, you know, started a chant. She was like, oh, Ari, it's your turn, turn to do it. And I was like, no, I'm Okay. She was like, no, come on, do it. And I was, I said no again. And then she, um, 
she said, Ari, Ari. And then everyone kind of in the club joins in and they're like, Ari, Ari. So of course, like I had to do it because I couldn't like get out of that situation. So I briefly, you know, touched and everyone started laughing. It, it was, it was funny to them because me of all people, they don't see, they see me as like a very, you know, modest or, you know, that kind of person. So me of all people touching a nude person is like hilarious. And how were you uh, feeling apparently. at the time? I was mortified. Um, I even remember like trying to cope with how awkward I felt by like making a joke about like the lotion that the, the nude performer was wearing. Like I, like, t like, I don't even know. I was just, I didn't know what to do. So I just kind of like laughed it off and <sighs> Yeah. Unfortunately, I left soon after that um, with Noel. Um, yeah. You know, Ariana Lizzo is obviously known for being a body image positive person, or somebody who sort of just says you got to own who you are and, mm -hmm. and be proud of it. But you've brought up mm -hmm. an incident. Uh, you're alleging something that happened at the South by Southwest Music Festival that you claim contradicts this image that's been created around her. Tell us about it. So actually, um, South by Southwest was mentioned at one of the end of tour parties, um, the end of the first leg of tour. Everyone was going around making their testimonials. And, you know, it was my turn. I wanted to speak up and say, hey, like, just thank you so much for like this this great journey, because at the time it was a wonderful journey um, for the most part, you know, besides a couple snafus with management. Um, and they're like microaggressions. But other than that, like the journey, I had met amazing people and it was great. So I was saying my piece of saying thank you. And I was saying that before I did this, I didn't really believe in myself and that um, it was hard when I first started, but I actually did it. And I was proud of myself. And she was like, oh, yeah, I was worried about you at South by Southwest. And um, I was thinking to myself, like, why would she say that she was worried about me at South by Southwest? We were we were doing promo for the show um, in South by Southwest, and that was the first time I had physically shown up having gained weight um, um, in front of everybody and to a Lizzo event, a Lizzo gig or whatever. Um, so that was the only noticeable difference about me. Everything else about me was absolutely the same. My dancing ability was the same. My energy was the same. Um, all of the girls can attest to that. Um, but the only thing about me that was different was my weight. And... I believe she was she was trying to allude to the fact that I was gaining weight in like a way that she wouldn't like get canceled. That makes mm. sense. So it was never like a you're fat, you're getting fired. It was never you're gaining too much weight. You're da, da, da. it was never blatant. It was very nuanced. Mm -hmm. And she stated in one of the meetings that we had, she was like you know, dancers get fired. We were, she was basically saying how grateful we should be that she knows our names and that she gives us the time of day. And then she was also saying that, you know, you should be grateful because dancers get fired for gaining weight. Um, and then she kind of looked at me and I don't know if she remembers if she looked at me, but it, it always felt like that. And then right. there was another instance when I was cornered into um, a room with just her and uh, the choreographer um, who I looked up to very, very much. Um, so it was very intimidating. And they pulled me into a private meeting and they wanted to know what was wrong with me. Um, because they said I don't seem the same. All of all of these don't seem the same. And what's wrong with you? You know, something must be going on. We can see right through you. All these kind of things have have been said to me um, in, in, in a way to like mask as a safe space. But really, there was this underlying air of like, why are you bigger? Right. It, it, that's, that's what it felt like. So um, let me, let me ask yeah. Crystal, um, you know, a, a lot of people are going to hear these accusations and be shocked precisely because of what Ed said. Lizzo is known for body positivity. Crystal, I want to ask you, you know, why did you want to work with Lizzo? And you know that our, some of her fans are going to say, well, we, you know, you didn't say anything about this experience until after you were fired. So how do you respond to them? Um, I know for me and Ari's case uh, in particular, our first time even in being introduced to her was through the show. Um, so, of course, before meeting her, we had this 
idea of her and everybody knows her message and her brand and what she stands for when it comes to body positivity, um, equality for different races, for different genders, um, and things of that nature. So, of course, with me being a plus size black woman in America, um, I did identify with a lot of the things that she stood for. And um, of course, I love to dance. That's what I'm passionate about. So whenever um, the opportunity came for me to get the chance to work with her, that seemed like the, the like my absolute dream um, job to which I ended up um, booking. So we kind of had like this high, this high start. Mm -hmm. And then over time, um, as reality kind of sets in and you're seeing that everything is in, um, the way that it seems that there's a lot of things that go on behind the scenes, um, your ideas of things uh, quickly start to shift. And especially with this being like our, our first professional job, our first tour, we're literally learning everything as we go. Um, and of course, everybody knows that kind of like in Hollywood and in the industry, um, things that happen don't necessarily get talked about as often. They kind of get swept under the rug. So it was just a lot to um, to process mm -hmm. um, up until things um, kind of spiraled out of control. Crystal, you know, so there's that old expression, don't meet your heroes because they might disappoint you. I mean, is this just maybe a case of uh, you had perceptions of what you thought this would be and it turned out to be different because she, like many other performers, has, you know, a different personality off stage? I mean, would an apology in this suffice or does it really have to become a legal matter? Um, yeah, absolutely. I, de I definitely think it's one of those things uh, where it's not just like this is an artist and you admire them for their talent. Um, that while that was, you know, a part of the reason, um, there's also the other side of everything that she stands for as an artist is a big reason as to why um, I think people stand behind her as much as they do. Um, and to me, I just couldn't sit with the fact that this was happening behind the scenes and this is a big part of her fan base, but she's kind of contradicting everything that she stands for behind the scenes. Um, well, uh, ladies, I want to thank you for sort of talking to us about this. Um, yeah. You know, yeah. as you already know, the reaction on social media has been swift, but there have been others who have come to your defense as well. Um, so uh, Ariana Davis and Crystal Williams, thank you. And if we get a response from Lizzo or her team, we'll, of course, pass that along as well. All right. So y'all just watched that interview. So this whole situation is very interesting. Another thing that's going viral is I think Beyonce may have gotten wind of this lawsuit situation because Beyonce basically is, has basically taken Lizzo's name off of the remix to her songs. So if you guys don't know, Beyonce does this thing on the Renaissance tour where she performs Break My Soul, the Queen's remix. And she mentions a whole list of women um, that she's, you know, basically paying tribute to. And Lizzo's name was mentioned. But in two separate videos, Lizzo is not mentioned. People keep saying it's a reach. But I have two different videos of Beyonce making sure to not mention Lizzo's name. And in one of the videos, she ends up mentioning Erica Badu's name four separate times. So y'all go ahead and check out both of these videos. All right, so you guys just saw that clip. So like I said, Queen B has definitely gotten wind to what's going on and she's trying to distance herself from Lizzo as soon as possible. So now another thing that I was thinking about was that a year ago, her and Cardi B did a song together called Rumors. And so I went back to watch the video and it seemed like she was trying to forewarn us about what was going to happen because it was very interesting that they had a song called Rumors. And in that song, Rumors, she's basically talking about lawsuits and NDAs and everything else. So y'all go ahead and listen to this snippet real quick. Had to cut some hoes loose, yeah. NDA no loose lips. Now them hoes trying to sue me. Bitch, I don't give two shits. So that was a year ago. She said she had to cut them holes loose. She says NDA, no loose lips. And then she goes on to say that they're trying to sue her, but she don't give a shit. Isn't it interesting that this was an alleged rumor in the song rumor? Okay, no pun intended. And now this rumor has now manifested into the truth that hurts. 
once again, no pun intended, okay? So I find this whole situation really crazy that that was the lyrics to her song a year ago. So I think she knew she fucked up, and I think she knew that these girls were going to potentially go after her for the things that she's done to them. Now, Shirlene Quigley is low-key speaking on the situation. Um, all she's doing is talking a bunch of mush mouth stuff. She's constantly talking about Jesus. So kind of everything that these girls were saying is the energy I get from Shirlene Quigley. So I want you guys to go ahead and watch this video really quick. Hey everybody, I just wanted to get on here really quick and say, God is so, so good. God loves you so, 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 so much. No matter what you're going through, even if you don't love him, he loves you. Glory to God. I just want to remind you that he is love. He is truth. He is the light. He is the first and the last. And all things work together for those that are called according to his purpose. And I just feel so blessed. I feel so thankful. I feel so full of joy. I had such an amazing time on tour with amazing people. And I'm so excited to be home, resting with my family and my dog after an amazing experience. And yeah, I just wanted to like tell everyone that God loves you and I love you and glory to God. And I hope you're smiling and you feel joy no matter where you're at or what you're going through. Because I'm telling you, God loves you. Bye. All right, y'all just watched her video. First of all, these are pretty serious allegations. And the fact that she's trying to basically cover everything up by invoking the name of God over and over again. She's trying to deflect and I'm not buying it. My thing is, if you love God so much and you're such a God-fearing woman, like I always say, you know, believe in whatever you want to believe in, but you can't serve two masters. You can't be in one breath, you know, screaming about God and how God loves you and follow God and follow the Bible and all this stuff. But then in the same breath, what they're saying about you is something totally different. You know, you're going to these sex parties. You know, you're pressuring women about their sex life. You know, you're involved in this demonic industry, but then you want to keep talking about God, 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 girl, bye. So this whole situation is a hot damn mess. It's going to be very interesting to see how this plays out. She's currently getting drug all over social media, but I've always found Lizzo low-key off-putting. And so this is what I wrote on social media today. I'm not shocked at all because Lizzo has been acting unhinged for a while now. I still remember when she would wear the most ratchet mess twerk and act a fool on camera then when she didn't receive the right attention that she was so desperately seeking she would cuss folks out then turn around and cry on camera and play victim after seeing this pattern several times i checked out she is taking her insecurities out on others and now that she's big time famous that ego has grown even though ego is a small three-letter word it causes people the most trouble I'm glad that lady put herself and her mental health first. So many people will take a celebrity's abuse in hopes of getting put on when the celebrity when the celebrity is actually just using them for their time and talents. Shaking my head. So those are my thoughts on this situation with Lizzo. Like I said, a lot of people would constantly baby her, make excuses. If we posted videos of her twerking, people would accuse me of posting it so that way, you know, my fans can fat shame her. It's like she posted it. It's a viral video. We're going to post it. You can't control the comment section just because she's big. And then as soon as she's not getting the attention that she wants, she wants to go on live and cuss folks out and cry. I just, so I've been over Lizzo for years. You know, when she first came out and she was humble, I did enjoy her. But then all her antics and constantly playing victim, I was over it. Because, again, she does stuff, and then literally she'll be crying in 24 hours. That's what I used to write. So I just don't have time for her nonsense. If she is guilty of what these women are accusing her, then I hope they get their justice because this is not cool. It's not cool to create a toxic work environment. It's not cool to pressure people to do things that they're not comfortable with. And it's really sad that a lot of these celebrities, I just don't understand what's going on. They are taking people, their fans, and people in their lives for granted. And it's not cute at all. You know, we've had a situation with Doja Cat where she cussed out her fans and said she didn't like them anymore and all this nonsense, caught them all types of B words, went in on them. 
And over 400,000 fans have unfollowed her. They're also returning and reselling her tickets because they're not going to support her concert. So she's losing fans by the droves. People are not playing these games with these celebrities. You know, we just have too many situations where these celebrities are taking advantage of their position, and it's not okay. It's going to be very interesting to see how all this mess plays out. But with that being said, I look forward to reading y'all's comments. Let me know your thoughts about this whole situation. How do y'all feel about this? Do you feel like there's some truth to this? How do you feel about Lizzo in general? And do you and what do you feel should happen from here? And then how do you guys feel about Miss Quigley? She's also named in this lawsuit. And instead of her either denying this or speaking on this situation, she wants to keep invoking the name of God to basically deflect. So let's go ahead and get the discussion popping. Go ahead and leave a comment. Make sure you hit that like button. Feel free to share the video. Most importantly, make sure you still subscribe to the channel. And I'll talk to y'all later. Deuces. If you want the latest news in the streets, join us sentiment for the tea. Breaking news with integrity, so tell your friends and your family. It's the Lovely Tea TV Show, bringing you good tea and good vibes. It's the Lovely Tea TV Show, be sure to share, like, and subscribe.